hi guys this is chef Jin academy so welcome back to another amazing video in today's class we are going to be looking at column design to the error code this is going to be a series of video in which we are going to drop on this channel so today we are going to be looking at the introduction part of this where we are going to be discussing about the various type of column and how you can consider designing a reinforced concrete column so if this is your first time on this channel kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification i've already created content on slab design and beam design to the euro code you can check out my video on them so column is considered to be a compressive member in which column is subjected mainly to axial forces then we can also have bending moment and some little bit of torsional moment so generally in construction we have different kind of uh, column we can have column that are reinforced concrete that is the addition of reinforcement to concrete in order to resist the intended load on the structure then you can also have other forms of columns in form of steel structure you can also have columns in form of wooden structure so column basically are vertical members that are subjected to axial load they can also be subjected to bending moment as i've discussed earlier let's talk about the way in which column transfer and absorb load from other structural member in a general sense the transfer of load is from the slab to the beam to the column in case when we have a solid slab but in case of a flat slab where there is no beam at all the load is transferred directly from the slab to the column and then from the column to the foundation in which the foundation now transfer the load to the ground so but we, we can have other situations in which the column is being rested on instead of being supported by a footing or by a foundation the column is being supported by a beam so this actually can happen based on the uh general arrangement of the building like in this case you can see that there's a column that is not being supported from the ground that is supported by a beam instead so this type of column are called stopped column so this kind of column are to be supported by by beam unless when you are designing your slab to be a flat slab this is when you can now consider your column to be supported by the slab but in case of a solid slab or rib or waffle slab then you have to have a beam to support the column then you generally what is most acceptable is for us to have a footing that is transferring the column load to the ground so before we now continue into the design of the column if you are interested in structural detailing or reinforced concrete you can check out my course on udemy structural detailing of reinforced concrete using autocad in this course you are going to learn a lot about detailing of reinforced concrete members ranging from solid slab raft slab rc column staircases and also how to prepare bar bending schedule you also learn how to detail various types of irregularities in slab like slab with irregular shapes you can you learn about slab with openings then you also learn how to detail shear wall how to detail different type of foundations then the last part of the course is going to be covering the how to prepare your structural drawings how to put them to sheets and uh, make sure all your drawings are being scaled so this is a nice course you can take it's about nine hours long and you have about seven articles you have full access to the course and you also have a certificate of completion so check out this course i will leave the link to this course in the description of this video so continuing on this we have different kind of types of columns so we can categorize columns based on a lot of categories if you consider a building as a whole so you can you can classify column to either be, be braced column or unbraced column so the classification of column to be braced and unbraced actually depend on the mode of 
resisting of lateral forces when the column is not designed to resist natural forces then that kind of column is considered to be a braced column but when the column is designed to resist lateral forces that can be as a result of wind load on the building then you can consider that kind of column to be an unbraced column so if you look at this diagram here you can see that you have a building in the left hand side as well as the right hand side that are both subjected to lateral forces so these lateral forces can be as a result of wind load as discussed before so but if you look at the two buildings you see that there's a little bit different at the middle of this first building towards the left you can see that there's a shear wall at the middle of the building the purpose of the shear wall is primarily to resist the lateral forces exerted on the building due to wind load or due to any other lateral uh, effect on the building so this the column in the first building that is the left hand side are going to be designed as a, as a braced column because in this case we have a brazen member that is bracing the structure against lateral forces which is the shear wall then another thing you can also use to brace your column from lateral load that is to resist lateral load aside from shear wall are stair wells then if you look at the second kind of the second picture on the right hand side you can see that there is no shear wall whatsoever attached to this building and this building is also subjected to lateral loads so in this case the lateral load from the building are going to be resisted by the columns and the beams so technically we can say that a brace column is a column in which the load imposed on the column as a result of gravity load which include the dead load and the life load but when you now say an unbraced column on the other hand an unbraced column is a column that is subjected to gravity load which is dead load and life load then in additional in addition to that you also have lateral loads because there is no bracing element to brace this structure from the effect of this lateral load on the building so therefore in design of that this kind of column you have to design them to be on braced column that is why most of the time when you see our high rise buildings you see you have shear wall either at some faces of the building this is actually done to resist the lateral load and to ensure that the columns and the beams are designed to be braced. I hope that is understood. Then we also have another type of classification. This is actually based on the geometry or the dimension of the column. So we have a column to be short or you can also have column to be slender. As I said earlier, this is based on the geometry of the building and also the sizing of the column in related to the load applied to them. So this can actually be differentiated using the slenderless ratio. The Euro code actually gave a formula in which you can determine the slenderless limit. Once you know the slenderless limit, then you can now compare the slenderness ratio of the column to the slenderless limit. If the slenderness limit is exceeded, then you have to consider that kind of column to be a slender column but when the slenderness ratio is less than the limit given by the code then that kind of column is said to be a short column so it's just by definition based on the slenderness ratio compare the ratio to the limit given by the code then we have the last type of column this this is actually based on the arrangement of the columns as well as the supporting beams so in this case you can have a column to be exactly loaded you can have column to be unihexial then you can also have column to be by exactly loaded exactly loaded is a column that is subjected purely to exact load there is no form of bending in this column so this column is purely exact load there is no bending moment then you need exact column or column that are subjected to bending moment we have exact load in addition to that you also have bending moment in one direction either the major or the minor direction majorly the minor the major direction of the column is subjected to bending moment then the by exact loaded column is column that is loaded in such a way that we have moment in both the major and minor direction so this diagram actually simplify the representation of 
column based on the way it is loaded so the first diagram is showing an exactly loaded column that is loaded at the centroid of the column so when the exit load acting on the column is loaded at the centroid of the column then you consider that kind of column to be exactly loaded then when the column is loaded at an eccentricity but along just one major part one major axis then you can say the column is uni axial then when the column is loaded in in such a way that it's an eccentricity to both direction of the column to be both axis both the major and the minor axis so you can see in this case we have two eccentricity along the x along the y then this kind of column are said to be by axial column but according to the euro code the euro code does not accept a column to be purely exile loaded because you could assume that due to construction activity and due to errors there's something we call geometric imperfection this is an imperfection that occurs due to construction uh placement and other stuff so therefore the euro could recommend a minimum eccentricity that we affect a column so therefore you cannot design a column to be exactly loaded according to the euro code there must be a minimum amount of movement generated from imperfection due to construction and other stuff so these are the major categories of classifying types of column so i hope with this video now you can now categorize column and understand the different categories so in our subsequent video we talk about the design of each of these column according to the euro code so make sure you like this video kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the like button you can also share it with your colleague you can leave a comment in the comment section of this video i will respond to all the questions thank you see you in our next one